So many fingerboarders believe that Tech Deck was the first to bring miniature skateboard toys to the market. This is not true. In fact, Tech Deck was not even the first company to have distribution into toy stores. But before we dive in, I'd love to hear from you. What was your first fingerboard? My first fingerboard was a New Deal and a Maple. I bought them at the same time back in 1998 from Toys R Us. Wait a second. Actually, I had a skateboard toy back in 1992. Huh, maybe that's my first fingerboard. Anyways, let me know in the comments and tap that like button. Let's rewind time back to the late 1970s. Skateboard legend Lance Mountain discusses his first interaction with a fingerboard. He discusses meeting another skateboarder, Erdnan Troyer, who made mini skateboards out of popsicle sticks with Hot Wheel axles glued on. Lance's experience is reminiscent of other older skateboarders that I've talked to. Steve Caballero, another skate legend, mentions in a blog comment that Lance Mountain gave him his first fingerboard in 1980 at Marina Del Rey Skate Park. In the blog post itself, Kevin Von Decker shares his homemade boards from the late 80s, highlighting the DIY aspect of the early fingerboard days. Kevin glued together layers of thin cardboard and glued images from Skateboard Magazine for graphics. The board utilized wheels and axles from Hot Wheel cars, and the trucks were actually crafted from balsa wood. A friend of mine started skateboarding in the late 70s as well. He found a wind-up skateboard toy produced by Tomy called the Kid Along. This toy was produced in 1979. Him and his friends purchased a handful of them and removed the wind-up mechanism. They would then session their sinks for hours. Now, arguably the most important event in the early days occurred in 1985. Powell Peralta released Future Primitive. In there, Lance Mountain can be seen fingerboarding within a double bowl sink with the entire Powell Peralta team surrounding him. Powell Peralta was a legendary team at this time. It's like watching a bunch of rock stars fingerboard. So the popularity grew from this. While there were some fingerboarders before this point, this inspired a whole new generation of fingerboarders. Following this, an advanced fingerboarding how-to article was released in Transworld Skateboarder magazine, also released in 1985. Due to this exposure in the skateboard world, fingerboarding's popularity grew rapidly. As I've mentioned before, the early days of fingerboarding was heavily DIY. However, there were also many commercial fingerboard companies around. Let's chat a little bit about that. But before we do, if you want to see more great fingerboard content, be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell. Keychain skateboards were very popular in the 1980s. You could purchase one for about $4. Popular skateboard brands such as Schmidt Sticks, GNS, Vision, and Tracker all had miniature versions of their completes in a keychain format. As I mentioned before, fingerboarders would remove these keychain attachments and ride the board that way. Around this time, flip boards came around. They introduced the concept of using a plastic board with removable wheels. Flip also sold fingerboard completes separate parts for the fingerboard itself, t-shirts, and even fingerboard ramps. Also around this time, Precision Board was released too. This board introduced trucks that could be removed from the board itself, kingpins, axles, and wheels as well. They even sold bags that were meant to carry your fingerboard. Somerville International created the fingerboard brand in the 1980s. They crafted plastic fingerboards with paper graphic inserts. These fingerboards were customized to highlight big skateboard brands back in the day, such as Vision and H Street, etc. Here's a picture from a prototype that was customized for Vision skateboards back around 1985. You can see the deck comprises of transparent plastic in two layers, which allowed a paper graphic to be inserted inside. On a related note, this is the same company that partnered with McDonald's in 2000 to create the McDonald brand fingerboards that came with those Happy Meals during this time. I have fond memories of seshing those decks. Obviously, there's not much footage from the 1990s, and there's even less from the 1980s. And if anybody's watching this video that was fingerboarding back then and does have any sort of footage from those time periods, please let me know in the comments. I'd, be, I'd love to showcase your content. Contrary to popular belief, there were numerous fingerboarders who were well around before Tac Deck. There were even companies that sold their fingerboards all over the world. That being said, this video is not meant to devalue Tech Tech's contribution to the fingerboard community. Tech Tech has and continues to make an enormous contribution to the hobby. They're responsible for the bulk majority of fingerboarders who have entered into this hobby. 
If you've enjoyed this video, then you will love the History of Figureboarding playlist that I've created. With over five hours of video content dedicated to fingerboarding's past, you will learn about fingerboarding's origin. You will learn about the early pioneers in fingerboarding. You'll see early contests and events. And the best part about this is I will be adding new content to this playlist regularly. So be sure to check it out. I also hear it makes great background noise if you're just cleaning the house or you need something just to relax to. Again, let me know if you've enjoyed this video in the comments and by tapping that like button.